Hi, this is Dr. Kathleen Hallinan, and we are continuing our weight loss vlog. Before we get to the surmount trial and terzepatide, I'm going to give you just basic information on a new website called joinmochi.com. This is a website to help patients who are looking for a physician who will write for medication to help with weight loss. I know a lot of you tell me that you have a very difficult time finding a physician. So if you are interested in that, that is a website down at the bottom there, joinmochi.com. And uh, I have been asked to give some feedback on their website. Let's go on to the surmount trial and terzepatide. This is a brand new therapeutic. I will tell you the data is so impressive. And then we'll go over what my, my caution is for you. So what is terzepatide? It is two medications in one. The first medication we already know about, GLP-1 receptor agonists. This is a class we've used for quite a few years already. This is the brand names you would know about are Ozempic, Ribelsis, Victoza. Very effective for diabetes and for weight loss. The second therapeutic is really interesting. It, is, it acts at the GIP receptor. What does GIP stand for? This is a tongue twister. Are you ready? It is glucose-dependent insulinotropic polypeptide. So we are just going to call it GIP. And the receptor for this molecule is found in several places in the body. It's found in your brain, it's found in your pancreas, and it is found in fatty tissue. And the mechanics of this receptor are very interesting and very complex. So for, for right now, our understanding is that the molecule that is this component of terzepatide is an agonist, or it activates it. So there are some very interesting characteristics of this and uh, more on that later. But for the most part, this is the data that I'm going to show you from the study. This was over only 72 weeks. These people lost a lot of weight. It approximates the amount of weight loss that we see from surgery. Now, important to know, Exclusion criteria for this trial were you couldn't have diabetes and you couldn't have had gastric bypass surgery. So these people overall had an average BMI of about 38, so very close to severe, severe obesity. But in 72 weeks, they had, on average, a 15% weight loss at the 5 milligram dose, a 19% weight loss at the 10 milligram dose, and a 20% weight loss at the 15 milligram dose compared to 3% with placebo. So this is a tremendously rapid, rapid weight loss. And I will show you in graph form so you can see this is from the study that was in the New England Journal. Um, the top line here would be the placebo line. And then you see how com comparatively what a dramatic amount of weight loss these people had, percent of total body weight at the 5 milligram 10 milligram and 15 milligram dose. The 10 milligram and 15 milligram really are so close together that you might as well just stick with the 10 milligram dose. Um, you don't get a whole lot more out of the 15. And then you see over here in bar graph form, same idea. The gray here is uh, the placebo. And then these are at the 5 milligram, 10 milligram, and 15 milligram doses, respectively, the percent of body weight lost. So Dramatic weight loss, very rapid. They did put these people on a diet, a 500 calorie below their baseline diet, and they did have them exercise on average 150 minutes a week. So, you know, those tried and true things still hold in these studies. Um, but compared to placebo doing the same thing, the weight loss was really impressive. Now we're going to get to my caution here. As with anything, I think you have to always exercise a little bit of caution when a new class of drug comes out. One of my uh, professors in residency always would tell us, never be the first or the last to use a drug. And I think there's a lot of wisdom in that. I like to wait about six months after a therapeutic has been out to see what, what happens post-marketing and what the experience is. Um, and I'll show you this. My concern is that, in essence, once you get on one of these um, a medication such as this, you almost seem to have to be on it for life because, and we know some of this now for the GLP-1 receptor agonists, here is just semaglutide. You see that 
you know, the weight loss is dramatic, right? But as soon as the medication is stopped, up goes the weight again. It does plateau out here, you know, so, and you're still, um, still have net weight loss, but I, I'm concerned because the speed at which this therapeutic shows, uh, causes people to lose weight, uh, there certainly may be an equally severe rebound effect, and I think there should be a little bit of caution before we jump right in. So, uh, as with everything, you still have to really focus on, again, uh, keeping a healthy diet, lean proteins, vegetables, a calorie count of 500 calories roughly less than what you would need to stay on, you uh, maintain your weight. And again, you can use MyFitnessPal or any other uh, way of counting that you, you feel comfortable with. And then, uh, and then activity, exercise, good, good solid uh, aerobic and resistance exercise, about 150 minutes a week, which is challenging for anyone in a busy lifestyle. But I would encourage you to keep up with those and, and see how, what you think. Uh, maybe we should give this a little bit of time before jumping into it. But it is really promising, really promising data. Okay, so you guys are doing great. Keep up the good work. Certainly, if you uh, are still having trouble finding a physician near you to uh, help with medications and therapeutics, you can uh, go to the joinmochi.com webpage. Uh, that may be an option for you. Okay, you guys are doing a great job. Thank you.